Hallelujah. Welcome to Bible study. We believe in the Word of God and I know you're here because you believe in the Word of God. You know, every time we go and open up the Bible, we get to learn from the Bible. We get to learn what God is speaking to us. And it's such a, an important tool for our life. God has given us so that He expects and He understands. This is the way His people are going to believe. This is the way His people are going to learn. And that's why we must be found in the Word of God all the time because that is where we belong. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Father, we thank you for your grace and your goodness. Thank you for who you are. I know you're faithful to your word. I trust you, Lord. Father, we're here knowing that you are faithful to everything that you're going to do. Let your faith arise within us, O oh Lord, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Let clarity come through people's ears, Lord. Let them know and understand of who you are. May them know the power and the might of the name of Jesus. You are faithful. We trust you and we thank you, Father, for it, Lord. Let us have hearing ears and an open heart receive from you in Jesus name amen amen so uh, we've been talking about faith and power over the last week we started this uh, this this chapter we talk about faith and power and we learned you know how important and vital faith is you know faith is the very access that we talk about you know without faith you know that's why the word of God says without faith it is impossible to please God you know why because faith is the very thing that connects you to the promises of God to the power of God uh, one thing that we looked about and we'll just go there now is we look at Mark chapter 5 verse 25 to 34 and we looked at this woman with the issue of blood and Jesus tells her something he tells her it is your faith that has made you well even though the power was there even though power may be all around you even the healing power of God may be all around you even right now you can have all the power in the world and yet in order to access it you need to have faith and that is how the spiritual realm works. The Holy Spirit is there available for everyone. He is there going out proving the word of God. Everyone who wants to prove the word of God, taste and see that he is good. See that you will prove the word of God and you will come to pass in your life. And how you do that is you do it by faith. Okay, let's read here from verse 25. Chapter 5, verse 25. Verse 25 to 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from her many physicians. She had spent all that she had and got no better, but rather grew worse. Okay. When she heard about Jesus, listen to this. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Who said? She said. If I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Did Jesus tell her, touch my clothes and you will be made well? Did any of the prophets come and tell her? No. Did any of the disciples come? To her? Did anyone else come and tell her, if, I, if you touch his garments, you will be made well? No one. No one. No scenario ever existed for her to go out and say, you know what? I'm going to touch his garments and I'm going to be made well. No. She created the scenario of faith in her life. She made a point of contact. She made her faith real to us. She made her faith so that she can understand that this is how I'm going to connect to the power that is going to flow of healing in my life. Okay? Verse 29. Immediately the fountain, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that Power had gone out. What? Power had gone out. He did not access the power. He knew the power was there with him. But he did not know who had access to it. He just turned around immediately saying in the crowd, Who touched my clothes? Who touched me? But the disciples said, You say the multitude is thronging and you say, Who touched me? There were people actually surrounding him and touching him. They were touching him by their hands. They were there. And yet, here, faith has made a connection and he realizes something has happened and he stops everything. This is what the power of God looks like. The power of God may be flowing all around you. But as soon as someone puts their faith on the power of God, the power of God obeys. The power of God follows faith out into that place of where they need it. You know, it just flows out to them because that is what attracts the power of God. Faith is what attracts the power of God. And he says, who touched me? And he looked around her saying, there was a nut, had done, and then see her who had done this thing. 
But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came down and fell down before his way, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of affliction. Your faith has made you well. You know, it was nothing that Jesus wanted. You know, he was going out doing his own part. He was going about doing to going to Jairus' daughter to raise him up, raise her up. He was not there for the healing. He was not there. But the power of God was there. The anointing in the same manner is always around you. It is always there. It was your faith in the anointing that will make you heal. You know, to say it this way, faith, faith alone obviously cannot do anything. But power alone cannot do anything either. Faith and power need to be connected to each other so that when faith accesses the power and the power that is able to fulfill all the demands of faith come together, you will see the miracles of God working in your life. It becomes reality when two things come together. Um, and that's how it is. You know, when, when we talk about faith, you know, this is what I want to encourage you. You need to switch on that faith switch. You know, you just need to do it. Because if you will say somehow or some days later, I will learn faith and some days I'll believe. Someday when I'm getting older, I'll believe. You'll all miss it. You'll all miss about on the goodness of God. You know, you need this combination. This is the combination that God has set. Faith and power. You need to allow God's power in your life. And in order to do that, you need to increase your faith. You need to sit down and read the word of God. You need to develop your faith so that you can have access to this power. You cannot go around just thinking someday it will just drop on your lap somehow. It's not going to happen. You know, you can be under... How can I say? You can be under the anointing of any one of the great ministers who, who have profounded themselves in healing so that they go out and have these conferences whatsoever. But if you have, if you just come with the expecting nothing, you are going to leave the expecting and getting nothing. That is how much faith is. You know, no matter how much power exists, no matter how much power, see, understand, the power that we talk about is none other than the Holy Spirit himself. This is the Holy Spirit that we talk about that made all that you see around you. All the heavens and the heavenlies and the earth were created through Him. The Word of God, Jesus, and for Him. That means the Holy Spirit went about doing exactly the, everything around His way. That is the power that we talk about. And you have to have just faith to access it. That is all you need. See, we need a manifestation in our life. We talk about manifestation. You know, church talks about manifesting the God, movement of God. Church talks about, oh, God, come out, come on the scene. God, come out on the scene, make something happen. God, oh, let's, let's, let's pray. This did not happen, you know. Maybe God is not here. No, that is never the case. God says in His Word, where two or more of you are gathered in my name, I am there. There is no church song that's needed to say, God, just come on the scene if two or more are gathered in His name. There is no requirement to call upon the presence of God because He is faithful to His word. We need to start acting up in faith and believing those things. We need to start acting as if He is here right now. We need to start putting our faith in it. You know, we need to mix the faith of God with power. His power has always been there. We need to start mixing faith and that's when you will start seeing. Uh, Brother Kenneth, you know, Kenneth Hagin, you know, he gives this example to illustrate what he's really saying. He says, you know, um, there was a time where uh, he was pastoring a church and there was this lady uh, who had suffered from this uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So she was there all the time and she was in a wheelchair. And so they were having this prayer night and they were praying and, and, and her body, you know, it's, it's because she was suffering from arthritis. Her body was stiff. She couldn't do anything. And, and it's like she, everyone saw her, but, she, you know, because of her stiffness, the way she was, they realized, you know, it, it just felt like her body was dead. So there was no life in it. So they were having this prayer group and he says, you know, they were doing it for every Wednesday afternoon at the church. And at one time when they were praying, they said, realize, look, let, let's go to this sister's house. We're going to pray for her. Let's we're going to believe for her. So everyone agreed. They go down and they start praying the word of God. They start praying. They believe, you know, and they were believing something. They told the ladies, you know, 
We expect something's going to happen. You, you keep your eyes open. We keep our eyes closed. You keep your eyes open because I am expecting something to happen. I'm going to see the power of God. And says, you know what? He says, I, I, I prayed. We prayed and we, you know, we talked about it. We, we believed God and we were praying, including everyone. And then we saw this happen. You know, the lady, the, this ladies are saying, you know, and we told her, you know, Sister, you arise and walk in the power of the name of Jesus. And what happened was this, realize this, what happened here? He says, in that moment, we saw and understood the power of God flow. Remember, this lady couldn't walk, couldn't stand up. We saw the power of God was so mightily upon her life. She was up in, her, in the air. She was suspended in the air for about two feet above the ground. And she was suspended there. How did that happen? The power of God was accessed and it was there. Now understand this. Now, if, if, if people saw this, you know, people saw that the Spirit of God was moving. The anointing came down. The anointing, the power of God, because of people believing, came down upon this woman. And there, it was resulting of the prayer of believing in something. And that's why it came to pass. But there is a person here who is connected and they need to have faith as well. So they are there in this place, they are praying and they see her in that manner. And what happened is that she reaches down and takes hold of the, of the wheelchair and sits down. And she falls, back, she falls back into the chair. And by the Spirit of God, he says, I say this. Sister, you don't have even an ounce of faith that God is going to heal you, right or wrong? And, and, and she says to him, looking blankly, she says, yes, very true. I'm just going to go to the grave on this chair. I don't have any faith in me. And you know what he says? That is exactly what happened. She, she was not healed of it. She, the power of God was there. She was lifted up. The power of God, the anointing flowed. People were there praying for her. The power of God was flowing through. She had the power, the access, and everything was there, available. All she needed to do was just say, yes, I will believe. I'm going to not have this anymore. I'm going to see this thing come out of my life. I'm going to see the power of God flowing in my life. Instead, she believed she will never get healed. And that's what happens. And a lot of people will look at those scenarios and say, those people who pray did not have faith. Those people who prayed did not have enough power. No, it doesn't work that way. Faith and power need to be connected together. Faith and power needs to be combined together in order to produce results. You know, it's so easy to blame people, to put them down and say, you know, they didn't have it. They're there. They're there. The access is there. They can all, many, many like, like, like the Proverbs, you know, say, you, you've got a horse, you can bring it down to the water, to the still water, make it, but you can't make it drink. You need pee. That horse needs to understand. I need to drink this water to have life in me. In the same manner, people need to come to the realization. That's why we teach. That's why we preach. That's why we go out and teach the word of God. That's why we go out and make people understand. Because it's not an issue of the power of God. The issue is never the source of the power. He has said it. He has done it. We need to get our faith right aligned so that we can have access consistently, continually. In our life. Look at James, look at James chapter 5, verse 14. Let's go to the book of James. Book of James here. Oops, 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 oops. Gone too far ahead. Book of James here. Book of James and chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 14. 14 to 16 says here, Is anyone, anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. What? The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith will, will make him well. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for another and that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. God has given you the very, very source. He says, you know what? 
the prayer of a righteous man is just, it just gives so much more power. There is tremendous power available of an effectual, of a righteous man. You know, we talk about power and we talk about saying, oh, maybe there's not enough power on, on, in this place. Have you got a righteous man with you? If he, a, can he pray? If a righteous man is available and he can pray, automatically God's word declares there is tremendous power available. There is tremendous power. That means it is dynamite. It is dynamite enough to change every scenario. You have just suddenly, because of a righteous man and his prayer, given a whole lot of access to power to flow through. And him being there makes all the difference. So the question that you need to start answering in this arena, are you a righteous man? If you believe in the blood of Jesus, if you have been declared, you are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus, can you pray? If you can pray, how do you pray? You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, of what He has done, and every promise will be a yes and amen in Christ Jesus. If you can pray, there is tremendous power that is dynamic in the Holy, Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit is always there. Power is always present. Understand? Power is always present everywhere because God is present everywhere. You don't need to just be in church and say, oh, in church there is power. No. Wherever God is, wherever two or more we gathered in my name, I'm there. If His God is there, you have the power of God to flow through. You and I are here right now and maybe you don't have a third person with you. That's okay. I'm here with you and I'm going to believe with you. And we are two people. And because two people are here, God is not separated by time and factors, all those things. He is present here right now and present with you. And you can believe God and you can receive the power of God flowing in your life if you will believe. You know, you, you, we, you know, we can make the power available, but you have to take hold of it and take it by yourself. You know, Jesus himself, if he was here, you know, the word of God says he went about his hometown and he was there preaching the good news. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do many miracles. He couldn't do many miracles except for heal a few people. Why couldn't he do? Because even though God is present at the scene, people will not believe. If they will not believe, if they will not have faith, they will have no access to the power of God. And that's what we need. You know, Jesus tells their daughter, daughter, your faith has made you well. You know, everyone else's faith made them well. Your faith is going to make you well. This is the way the, you know, the power is available. Uh, what is there is available. It is there ready for us. All you need to take it is take it by faith and say, you know what? I am going to receive what the word of God says. I have made a realization. The power of God is available right now here, right this moment. And I'm going to take it by faith. Not another day. I'm going to live in this sickness and disease. No matter what the symptoms have said. No matter what the doctors have said. No matter what report has said. The word of God declares who has believed my report. Is the arm of the Lord shortened? Is there no power in the promises of God? Is, the, is, is, is God not able he is more than able. The power of God is available right now, right here. You have the ability to access it by faith. Mix your faith with the power of God and see those promises come to pass. There is tremendous power. Like we read, there is tremendous power made available right now. If you can see what I'm seeing here made available this this atmosphere is charged with the atmosphere of god it is charged with the power of god all you need to do is step in it by faith and take what god has declared for you let's pray let's believe god father we thank you yes lord father faith is rising up and father we believe and stand on your promises lord we stand and we act by faith we receive the promises of god we take it by faith lord it is ours, it is ours for the taking and we will not deny it. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I take it, body. You line up to the word of God. Everyone who is listening right now, Father, may the word of God go through their life. May a faith that is accessed right now, right now, that Father, we declare we are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. And because of that, there is tremendous power made available even right now. 
All those people who are acting by faith, taking and saying, you know what, I receive my healing. I take it by faith, Lord Father. Let the healing power of God flow in their life. Let them receive from God everything that He has declared. Healing comes right now. Life be in the name of Jesus. Ooh, we take it by faith, Lord. We know your faith. We receive it. I hope you receive that. You take it by faith. Don't let go of your faith. Your faith is going to change this world. You know, you go into the Word of God. You read the Word of God. You increase in the Word of God. You increase in the faith of God and see those promises come into your life. We've got lots more to cover. Lots more we'll go through. But I hope you learned something here tonight. Until next time, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bye-bye. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram JCLMPG. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLMPG to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.